Hi everyone. I like to make these videos where I sit down and I talk about a subject which I often get asked about. So I thought I'd do one showing you my top 10 speakers. Um, it's a bit of a general video about speakers but I'm going to do it in a bit of a countdown um, order. And I'm going to try not to just look at what's the best sound but also take into account the size of it and how easy it is to fit as well as the price of it because obviously that makes a difference too when you're trying to choose a speaker. It's not going to be an exact guide because different speakers suit different sounds. So I might say a speaker's really good, but when you pair it with a particular sound file, it just might not suit it. Or equally, I might say that one isn't particularly good, um, but it might sound really good in certain scenarios. So it's only a guide and it's only my opinion but hopefully it helps people anyway. You're welcome to leave a comment below and um, let me know whether you agree or disagree. Um, it'll be interested, interesting to find out what you think anyway. And obviously any comments I'll try and get back to you with a, a reply, particularly if it's a question. So I'll go through in my top 10 order then. So you probably won't be surprised to hear that the, the worst speaker on the list is going to be the sugar cube. I can understand why people use them because they're small um, but it's the only speaker really that I sell which isn't ready to use and I don't particularly like the fact that you have to build it yourself because it leaves more margin for error. So you've got to get these plastic parts and make up your enclosure and then you glue them all together and you have to make sure that it's airtight because if it's not airtight it'll crackle uh, or it'll just be very quiet um, and then even once you've built your speaker up and it looks like this you'll still have exposed contacts on the back of it which are really easy to short out on a like a piece of track or on a metal chassis block so I just don't think they're particularly good and I'm surprised that that's what the decoders still come with. So I have done a full video on those speakers actually which you might want to watch. I'll put a link in the description but otherwise uh, that's my opinion on them anyway. I just think there's better options available. The next thing on my list um, is the bass reflex speakers. So these are sort of the old-fashioned bass reflex speakers which first came around in, I don't know the year, but maybe 15 years ago. Um, they were popular when the Loxon 3.5 decoder were out, so I guess it's probably even more than 15 years. Um, but I just think technology's moved on. You can get these in a couple of sizes, but they're all fairly big, so you're limited to what they'll fit in. And given that they'll take quite a lot of effort to put into some models, they just don't sound as good as you'd expect for the uh, size of them. They were good at the time and when there were nothing else available, um, but I just think technology's moved on a little bit and uh, there's a lot more choice of speakers now, so I wouldn't particularly recommend these. They, they might potentially sound good in a few models, but in most cases you can beat them. The next speaker that I'm going to talk about will probably surprise you that it's come so far down the list. It's the EM2 speaker. So it's arguably one of the best sounding speakers you can buy. It's definitely one of the most powerful sounding. Um, they've got loads of bass and um, they can be quite loud as well in certain models. So in terms of sound, it's good, but it, it's big, very big, so most of my customers use double O gauge and the only model I can think of that this will fit straight into is the Hattons Class 66. The other problem with this speaker, potentially for people, is that it's quite bass heavy, so you lose a bit of clarity that you get from other speakers and a lot of people then try and put a second speaker with it to run two speakers but then you dilute the bass from this one almost at a point where there's no point using it because you're not getting the full potential of it anyway but it's all rubberized if you can see on the camera so all the speaker cone and everything is like coated in a thick rubber which potentially is why it doesn't um, 
sound as sharp as some of the other speakers, I'm not sure. But I wouldn't sort of discourage you from using this speaker, but it's not necessarily worth milling out a model and rewiring it all to fit one. Not now, um, not now some of the newer speaker types are out, which are arguably close in terms of sound, but without all the work. It's also expensive, this speaker. You're looking at close to £25, so that makes it the most expensive speaker that I sell currently. So, yeah, good sound, but it can be beaten. The next one's another one that's been popular in the past, and it's still a good speaker, again. I do like the sound of these, but it's another one where it's quite hard to place because of the size of it. So you can potentially get into a, a tender in a steam train, but that often involves cutting out the um, sort of the coal floor, the coal section. So not everyone wants to do that again. It's it's a bit of work. Um, you can get them into sort of bigger diesels sometimes. You can get them into a Honda HST. That's probably the uh, most common use for them at the minute, and they they do sound really good in the Honda HST. But it's not as versatile as most of the other speakers that I sell now. So it doesn't come as high up in the league as it might have done a few years ago. Next one is another old favourite. It's the double iPhone speaker. I still think there's a place for these. Um, they still do sound good. And one of the things I've been quite pleased with with these is that now you can adjust the bass and treble on lock sound decoders. You can turn the bass up on these and it responds quite well to it. It'll let you produce quite a lot more bass without any kind of distortion or anything. You can tell that the iPhone speakers are good quality and I guess that they're made for music and video and that kind of sound rather than a model. So it gives a nice crisp and clear sound. Um, but again, I just think there's maybe more versatile speakers out, which I'll show you in a second. But yeah, these are good still. The, I've got three sizes of them at the minute. I do them as single iPhone speakers as well, which I guess is, it falls under the same category in terms of sound. Um, so yeah, worth trying, worth having a few in your uh, toolbox if you like to experiment with speakers. But again, just because new stuff's come out recently, it probably doesn't come as high as it might have done a couple of years ago. The next speaker, or speaker range I've done in this case, is one of the more recent things. So these are the ESU speakers. Um, these are what I refer to and what ESU refer to as passive radiator. So it's kind of similar to the EM2, but it's got one advantage, but I'll just show you first. So if you uh, look at this, it's got the passive part here, so that only moves because the other speaker cone inside here is moving and that makes that part move which helps to make a bit more bass. Um, there's three sizes plus a round one actually, so four sizes of this speaker and they sound really good. It is one of my favourite speakers. Um, they use a similar to a tablet speaker or similar to a sugar cube actually, instead of using sort of a traditional cone type speaker. Um, but that gives you a lot more clarity than you would get with the other speakers, um, such as the EM2. So you've got the best of both worlds really, you've still got plenty of bass because of that passive radiator, but you've got really clear sound as well. So these are really good, and this size in particular, which is the, I don't know if you can see it here, but the, the smallest size, that one I find the most useful, just because it'll go in the most things. This one here, that sounds nice. Um, that's like the size that would go in on a Chiara scale model, but there's not many other things it'll go in, just because it's so big. Um, so yeah. That one probably gets most of its points on my sort of table because of the smaller sized one. Um, the only reason it's not higher up is because it's fairly expensive. So it, obviously I can't give it full max because it's more expensive than other speakers. 
but I'd recommend using them and trying them and I think most people who have used them so far have been really pleased with them. The next speaker is one that I don't sell all that many of um, but it's a really good speaker. I'm really impressed with the sound of it and it's just it's the thinnest speaker that I've seen. So it's got me out of all kinds of trouble when I've been trying to fit something into a small space and I've not wanted to compromise on the sound quality. So it'll usually take up most of the width of a model, but you've often got the full width available um, and the height's a limit limitation. So I really like this speaker. I think it's probably um, intended for a tablet or something else that's got to be thin. But it just sounds really good. It's hard to explain how good it sounds without you actually trying it. I think it sounds better than most of the other speakers that are a similar size, despite being much thinner. So yeah, I really do recommend that. And when you compare that to something like the bass, re bass reflex speakers, which I mentioned near the start, it's just in a completely different league. You wouldn't believe that this is the smaller of the two speakers if you heard them. So yeah, I'd really recommend that one and if you haven't tried it already, that, that's one you should go and order um, and have in your toolbox. The next one is probably my best selling speaker. So it's the 20 by 20 Megabass. Um, I've purposely showed you two here because a lot of people like to use these in pairs because traditionally models had space for a 20 by 40 speaker. So two of these makes up your 20 by 40 so you can often just drop two of them straight into a model and they sound really good. They've got a nice crisp, bassy, deep sound. Um, I use them all the time. They sound good with diesel, sound good with steam sound good in electrics too. There's just there's very few models that these are not a good speaker for. Um, and it, I use them all the time and I, I sell them all the time. It's it's one of the most popular upgrades for people. Um, this one definitely falls into a category where it's getting extra points on basis that it's easy to fit as well. And they're not particularly expensive either. So yeah, you've probably used these already if you're one of my customers, because um, most of you have. But I'd definitely recommend those. The next speaker, so we're up to number two now, is this tiny little tablet speaker. Um, it's just, it, it, I'm not going to try and say it's the best sound out of all the speakers. It doesn't sound as good as most of the other speakers that I've mentioned in fact but it's absolutely tiny it's thin, almost as thin as the speaker I mentioned a couple of minutes ago but it's also a lot narrower and a lot shorter so this will go in almost anything so you can like cram that into the smoke box of a pannier tank for example along with the decoder or you can fit it into a, a small shunter or you might want to stick it to a cab roof in something if you're really limited for space and it's loud so it just gives you a, a big sound from a tiny speaker which you just wouldn't expect um, I was surprised when I first heard them and I, I've used them a lot it's another one of those speaker types where it's got me out of trouble a few times where I thought I was going to struggle to get everything in or I thought we were potentially going to have to start like hacking parts out of the insides of models and then I realised that this will fit and it, it sounds very good. It's also useful as a second speaker if you're the kind of person who likes to experiment with more than one speaker because it's happy to go up to loud volumes and uh, it's 8 ohms so it'll pair nicely with another 8 ohm speaker. So yeah, that one I really do like and I use, I use regularly. Um, and again, I don't sell all that many of them because it's just it's hard to put across how good it is so people don't necessarily know about it so hopefully this video uh, helps to highlight it and then I think the best speaker overall when you take into account size, uh, price and performance is this tablet speaker it's a strange shape because it's obviously designed to sort of fit in with the curves of a tablet and the sound comes out of the side of it 
but it's it's such a powerful sounding speaker. It's a useful size because it's fairly low. It's got a, a self adhesive back which comes in quite handy because you can uh, just stick it down in a model quite often. And it's very narrow. I wish it were a bit shorter if it were maybe up to where that little black sticker comes to. Um, if it could just be that little bit shorter it'd be even more useful. Um, but you can't have everything. But these are priced sort of towards the bottom end of the speakers but sound almost as good as the premium speakers like the ESU ones. So it's just a speaker that you can't ignore really. And uh, again I've used them in loads of different types of loco and uh, loads of the best installs I've done. Uh, I've used them in some of my own favourite models and I just think they're brilliant. And uh, if you haven't tried that one yet, definitely get yourself one to try in a model. So yeah, I've not covered every single speaker that I sell, but hopefully it has given you an idea of um, which speakers to use and maybe which ones to avoid today. So hopefully it's been useful. It will be interesting to hear what people think if I've uh, missed anything or if you disagree with a particular speaker that I've mentioned. Um, I won't be offended if you disagree. It will be genuinely interesting to hear what you think. So I'll leave a comment and I'll try to reply. All of these speakers are available on my website. I'll put a link in the description and flash it up on the screen now. So hopefully if you've not tried any of them and you're interested, you can go on there and order some. So I appreciate everybody watching and hopefully I can do some more videos in a similar style to this one because people do tend to enjoy them. Thanks a lot. I'll see you all soon.